The Brian Mudd Show is on News Radio 610 WIOD. We've been talking healthcare stuff, and uh, the the news has been good on the virus relatively. We're Sitting the, the best we have in Florida with our trend for cases since the first couple of days of August. We talked about the hospitalizations that are down considerably from peak levels of just over two weeks ago. Uh, but there is a another story that is uh, bubbling up. And that is one of Dr. Lena Marasini of South Miami. And this has actually become a national news story. She's become the first doctor in our state to refuse service to patients who've yet to be vaccinated for COVID-19. According to Dr. Marasini, she said, I understand that people are free to choose, but to me, it's a problem when it affects other people. When it comes to the safety of others, when it comes to the fact that it's a global health problem and community health problem, at this point, I really say that this is where it draws the line in the sand for me. So we've actually reached out to uh, Dr. Marasini. We'll see if uh, she's want to come on and, and talk to us about it. In the meantime, we are joined by Todd Furness, once again, the author of The 60% Solution, Rethinking Healthcare. Todd, what do you make of this one? Well, thanks for having me on. It's a little bit of a puzzle, isn't it? Because doctors have a moral obligation on the one hand to promote and protect health, uh, but they don't have a legal obligation to enter into a an, a contract with anybody to, pro- to uh, provide care. So what's puzzling to me about this is who is she worried about? And she doesn't ask the second question around has somebody already had COVID so that maybe they don't need the vaccination or any of the, you know, countless other questions one might have around the vaccination status. Uh, It's a it's a strange way to to carry yourself professionally. You mentioned the oath, and that's something that I wanted to to bring up to you and, and get some of your uh, expertise on. So obviously you have an oath that you take as a physician. And, uh, you know, would this not potentially be a violation of that oath to refuse service based upon vaccination status? Well, they can't, they're not refused. She's, in this instance, I don't perceive that she's refusing emergency medical care uh, in the context of ser- serving as like an ER doc, for example. Um, and so I don't see that coming into play in this instance. It's much more of a, a fundamental moral question where I think she's you know, running, if not over the line, then she's certainly close to the line of violating a moral obligation that she would have as a doctor. Uh, at least, you know, I'm read, read prepared for this morning by reading The Lancet, which talks about this as a you know, very highly regarded publication on the subject of healthcare and physician responsibilities. You know, Todd, you you bring up a really good point. She is a general practitioner, so it's not an ER type situation. And so, you know, expressing that type of of preference. Have you seen some of this type of activity begin to occur in COVID? And by this, I mean more doctors that are deciding to pick and choose who they will accept as patients. Well, yeah. And one of the things that I think we may have spoken about a couple of weeks ago was the memorandum that came out from a hospital physician here in Texas, where the, the physician said, wrote the memorandum, said, you can consider vaccination status in in the evaluation of triage op- options. Now, think about that. As somebody's coming into the ER and the doctor is saying, you can consider whether or not somebody's been vaccinated to determine whether or not you're going to give them treatment and further what kind of treatment you may be giving them. So that is an ER situation. That is a different moral and legal standard. Um, But it seems to me to be very, very peculiar that somebody would say, hey, I have the right to make a moral decision about your election not to get a vaccination. I I don't know that this has ever happened in human history where doctors are saying, I'm electing not to treat you because I don't find your decisions to be morally sound and therefore I'm going to elect not to treat you. On to your point, Todd, you know, the the one question I want to ask her above all others, I'm I'm especially curious about, um, you know, you, you do have those that have medically the inability to accept vaccines so if if someone is not able to medically accept a vaccine are they they're just not welcome in in her office anymore i guess that's the case the good doctor has a lot has decided that she is uh going to be uh, king of the land and and uh, make those determinations based on her own moral code uh and her virtue signaling 
Yeah, it is an interesting dynamic and world we live in. Uh, Todd, uh, always good talking with you. Todd Furst, the author of the 60% Solution, Rethinking Healthcare.